All right, well, look, um, I, I appreciate everybody joining me. It's, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Um, so I, as I think I said to all of you, we're going to start with um, character creation and just walk through the backstory generation. And then this evening will be kind of like the introduction to, to where we are and where the next few sessions are going to be set so we can kind of get grounded. And there are a few encounters and stuff that we may run through this evening if we get time. Uh, does that make sense to everyone? Any questions? I'm gonna have no questions, but I'm I'm counting on you guys to save me. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Can awesome. you join in roll twenty? There's a link oh, in yeah. the uh, chat. Oh, okay. And then I give you a character sheet. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. profession with GM approval. Beautiful. What is it? I, I chose a personal security person. Oh, nice. Like one of those, like a, a security guard to the stars kind of thing. Yeah, kind of like that. But he was for some uh, kind of unknown rich guy who died. So it sucks to be him. <laughs> unknown rich guy. I, I got, is this well, like a, an Elon Musk type that just suddenly copped it in the, uh, in the virus? Is that what you mean? I just imagine there's like a a lot of people that are in that like hundred million sort of range that are yeah. like Wall Street execs that you know nobody knows who they are, but but they exist. So he was like a personal security guy, just to someone not famous but but very rich. Did did anyone ever read the book? Um, I, I won't drag us down rabbit holes, but did anyone ever read the book of the movie or the original book World War Z? No, but I heard did, it's way better than it. the movie. The, the book is amazing, right? The movie was very mediocre, but the book is just a series of vignettes, right? So you, I, I don't know if you even visit the same character twice. It just tells the story of what's going on from all these different perspectives. And one of them is that, right? There's a, uh, a security guard that's hired to protect someone. The way he describes it sounds like it's Bill Maher, right? It's a, it's a liberal uh, comedian that has a specialized show. But it's just this fascinating little vignette about the guy who finally says, oh, fuck the celebrity. I'm just going to try and survive and heads off into the zombie apocalypse. Great book. Highly recommended. Yeah, I heard it's it's way better than the movie. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would have failed that test by watching the movie instead of reading the book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we good to go? Is I Mina in? Know. There she is. All right, beautiful. Well, look, um, <clears throat> I think that we've already kind of jumped through this, but, you know, I am uh, trying to test all the different uh, parts of the rules out, right? So... I'd wanted to go through backstory generation. I know I'd asked a series of questions already. So if you guys already have the uh, character built, as I think some of you have, no need to run through this, right? But I am going to walk through the steps just to make sure they kind of make sense to everyone as we're going through it. And then um, it really is up to you guys what you tell each other about your characters, right? We'll talk about where, you know, where we're going to start, what the campaign is going to look like once we've gone through character creation. But as we're going through the different steps... If you feel like telling the other people, like if you're going to be playing a, a vivacious, gregarious character that would really tell anyone that was listening about their, you know, where they grew up and all that kind of stuff, feel free to share that with the group or feel free to keep it yourself so we can build plots around it later. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, beautiful. Let me just make sure. All right, perfect. Just wanted to make sure I was streaming. All right, so... Um, I won't bore you with all of this, right? But you, you'll know this. The idea is that it's a life pathing system. You get to spend points. You get to go through the different points in your character's life and say what happened to them and really kind of define them. 
So uh, this is a, if you hadn't already seen this, I, I could this this uh, flow chart together. And hey, zero theory, I'd love to pick your brains a little bit later. The, the feedback you gave me about, hey, you having to jump around too much to get it. I'm struggling with self-editing, as I mentioned, so I'd love some feedback from you. But this chart is there. Um, this is actually is a handout also in your journal. So I think you should all be able to see that in the game. Um, so first step, right, and also... I mean, I'm not sure if you have this up, but there is a worksheet that you can download where you can just fill all of this in and automatically populate everything you need. And there's also a character sheet that you can download that's form fillable, right? So you can go in and put all these different uh, uh, the, the, the elements in. So the, the first step in character creation is who are you, right? So you may already have an idea of this. So if you know who your character is in terms of name, age, height, weight, gender, all those kind of good things, have at it and fill them in. And then one of the things that uh, to help you kind of get a good sense of who your character is or provide kind of like a touchstone or a North Star, pick three descriptive words to go in here, right? So, you know, is your character charming, belligerent? Are they scared? Are they um, arrogant? Whatever it is that you think sums up your character, Go in and fill in those uh, those three descriptors there. A any question on the, uh, the the concept, or anyone need a couple of minutes to fill that in, or are we good to move to the next stage? Uh, I just like to say I, I really like the idea of keeping it simple with three words to describe yourself, especially like character creation. I think that's a pretty good change. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. Thank you. Made it easier for me as I was trying to decide on the characters. So, all right, perfect. Thank you. All right, so moving on to that step, you know, cheesy step zero, right? But step one is personal growth, right? So in, in this part of the uh, the phase, you're going to answer three questions, where you grew up, what your character learned, and what they like to do. All the things that really kind of like summarize your characters, right? So first thing is where they grew up, right? So during this phase, you get to spend uh, one of the character development points, CDP. You can add it to any of your attributes, right? So reason, acumen, physicality, influence, or dexterity, and raise it from zero to one. You also get four character development points to spend on any of the skills that you want, right? So there's a skill list up on the screen at the moment. You also have it on the character screen. So figure out where did they grow up and what did they learn? Did they grow up in a rural setting and are they, you know, good at hunting and survival? Did they grow up in a urban setting on the streets? Were they good at sleight of hand, you know, uh, lock picking, all that kind of good stuff? So uh, let me know when you've uh, thought that through. And then, you know, and I know I'm talking a lot at the moment and distracting you guys, but the idea as you go through these stages is to, to write a sentence or two about who they were during this stage of their life and kind of like what made them who they are. So that when we kind of, you know, when we get done with all of this, you've got kind of a ready-built backstory for your characters. Right, any questions on what you're going to be doing in this first stage with the where they grew up? Uh, no. I go back to what I said earlier. This is totally up to you guys whether you share, but... You know, as we go through this, if any of you do feel like saying, hey, I grew up in wherever, Alaska, whatever it was, feel free to share it with the group. It was Oregon. Let me pull up a map and show it to you. Oh, in fact, Mina, it should be, if you're looking in roll 20, it's a, <coughs> the home screen should be there. And it's a pretty cheesy map of Astoria, but it kind of shows uh, a little cartoon version of it. Okay. In, in roll 20? Yeah. Yeah, that's in roll 20. And then I'm just about to put a, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, I have it up on the screen for Twitch, but let me put that into Discord so you can see it. That's a Google map. So that's Astoria, Oregon, right? It's just on the border of kind of Washington and uh, and, uh, and Oregon. <clears throat> and it is the titular home in the sea or home by the sea. All right, so the second part of personal uh, growth is what you learned, right? So this could be, you know, you may have grown up on the streets, you could have been a little pickpocket, you could have gone to an Ivy League school. 
But this is really whatever you learned, right? So this stage, you get to add another character development point to any of your, uh, your attributes. And you also get to spend two more character points on your skills and uh, kind of, you know, who, who you grew up to be. Or who, what you learned during that phase, I should say. And as with the other phases, if it's helpful for you to do this on the fly, kind of like building your character, uh, write down a, a line or two about where they grew up and anything that may have made this, uh, anything notable about their, their histories. Then the the last uh, the last step in in this or last phase in step one is what they like to do. So this is really obviously like hobbies and that kind of stuff, right? The things that they rounded out as they kind of anything that wasn't related to work, but you know what you who made your character who they are. So during this step, you get to add uh, another character development point to any of your attributes and four more character development points to any of the skills. I should also have said during this this step. You, you can raise any of your skills from 1 to 2 or 0 to 1 or 1 to 2, but you can't raise any of your skills or attributes above level 2 during this phase. So you're capped during the personal growth stage at, at 2 for attributes and skills. Is the list, that skill list, all of them, or is there Correct. some missing? No, no, that's all of the skills in the game. Originally, I'd, originally I'd gone created different lists for the different steps, but it just didn't make any sense. As I started, you know, working through it, it really made sense that anybody could do any part of it, you know? So where they grow up, it's one rapid four skills. Correct. What they learned is one rapid. Correct. One rapid and two skills. And then what they like to do is one rapid and four skills. Tell you what helped me after digesting the uh, the quick start and everything. Yep. Is to think five stat points, fifteen skill points, and if you want to go above two, then that costs uh, two points for that three. Wait. So there's diminishing returns on the stat points now. If you go above two. Okay. Yeah, it's always that way. So what they like to do is one rapid, four more. Uh, uh, one rapid, four more skills. Sorry. Right. In which phase, Matt? What what they like to do. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. One more. One more skill. One one. Attribute and four more skills. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions on step one or stage one? Does anyone need any extra time on this? No, I'm just trying to go back through where I typed the description or the answers to the questions so I can copy and paste it. So I can <laughs> <type it. laughs> 
And hey, I mean, I'm not sure if you've seen this. I, I, I'm not sure if you hear what Matt was saying about this, but if you go into Roll20 and look in your journal, he's created a character sheet for you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to type some stuff in it now. I'm just not Beautiful. quite sure what to If you need any help going through this, because I think you're the only one that may not have done this previously. So if you need us to answer any questions, that's what this session is all about. Okay. Oh, to be quite honest, I didn't know what to ask or, or, or where to start. So. Hey, are you we able... Can, we, we can clean your character up later on... Don't worry about it. That would be great. I'm afraid I don't work well under pressure. <laughs> hey, no problem at all. No problem at all. So should we... Does it, Hey, so Zero Theory, should we step back and show Mina, like, walk us through what we're doing, or should we clean this up afterwards? What makes the most sense? Probably afterwards. All right, beautiful. Yeah, perfect. 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 Okay. I could, I could kind of see what's going on, and then he'd go over and clarify it. Hey, no problem at all. All right, so... If everyone's up uh, with step one, it means that, again, we've spent, um, I say we, you guys have spent three character development points on attributes, and you've spent 13, uh, sorry, 10 points total on skills. All right, so moving to the next step, which is uh, professional growth. So uh, during this phase, you get to spend uh, two more character development points on any attributes, and you get five points to spend on skills. You can raise them from two to three at this point, but they cost two uh, character development points instead of one, right? So if you wanted to take a skill from one to two, it costs you one point. If you want to take it from two to three, it costs you two points. That makes sense? Yes. Beautiful. I And, you know, Zero Theory mentioned this when he came in, but, uh, you know, if anyone wants uh, any suggestions or any kind of primers, then there's some some professions and vocational skills, right? So these really are just thematic, right? So if you know if you're an outdoors man, it kind of groups in some of the outdoor skills. Um, this really is very optional, right? And so this was just there to put some kind of format to it. But I I love the fact that Zero came to this and said that he's going to be a professional bodyguard. So. Uh, I, I again, I really like the fact that someone's going custom with this. So, Matt, Mina, um, John, and uh, I want to call you Zero, but Gary, uh, are, are you all good on the profession stage? Uh, and, and anyone got any questions on this? Yeah, I'm good. I am also doing a custom. I'm going to be a fisherman. Oh, oh, nice. I like that. That ties it beautiful. All right, beautiful. All right, so again, like I'm not expecting you to do this, but uh, as with the other stages, it's recommended that you write down a couple of sentences that summarize, you know, any highlights or lowlights to do with your skills or to do with your uh, 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 backstory, your profession, I should say. Wow. All right, so the next step is secondary stats, right? So if you're using the, uh, the spreadsheet, <clears throat> you don't need to do any calculation here, right? This part, of, I'm not sure if you guys are looking at the Twitch, but uh, the, you know, in the spreadsheet, there is an area that, that does all this calculation for you. Um, uh, and also on the character sheet, it kind of explains what the formulas are, right? Like, you know, wound points is 10 plus your physicality and your dexterity A mods. So any questions on uh, your secondary stats or anything that we need to discuss here before moving on? Um, uh, I don't believe so. In the uh, no. World 20 character sheet, yeah. the, uh, the defensive ones don't seem to be populating with the dodge, and I can't seem to manually edit them, so I didn't know if that would fix itself later on. I will let Matt answer that. I don't know. Uh, so what's supposed to happen now? Uh, your defense uh, modifiers. Yeah. So it says physicality A mod plus dex is right. your A mod and your. No, I can't read it. Let me, uh, let me look at my notes here. Tony, can you go to skills, please? Uh, can you just drag that out of the way? Oh, sure. To, um, so it says physicality mod. Where does it say? Like your, your, your melee defense modifier is yeah. your 
uh, physicality, A mod plus your dodge. Where does your it say range is, is, is your dex A mod plus dodge. Where does it say dodge? Oh, that's that's in the quick start rules. Ah, shit. Yeah. All right, I gotta go through and fix that. Thank you, Zero. Sorry, Matt. Okay. He is absolutely right. It does include dodge. Trust me, I went through that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pointing that one out. All right, Matt, we'll, we'll come back to that. Sorry, there's obviously a discrepancy between what I've given you to code and also what I've written up here. So thank you for spawning that, Gary. Appreciate it. All right. Um, why they act like they do is the next step, right? So, uh, I, you know, we've all been through this, right? But every character has a complication and also a motivation, right? It's something that I can help build storylines around or something that helps explain their behavior as it comes to complications and their motivations really kind of their core, right? And this also ties into, or can tie into the three descriptors. Just this idea that, you know, everyone's trying to really on a base level do something, right? Whether it's like find safety or just stay alive, whether they're trying to take advantage of other people to get further, whatever it is, everyone has one of these complications and motivations. So I, I, you know, to me, these are kind of integral, but if you wanted to roll 2d6 and just pick these at random, that would also work. Any questions on complications or motivations? Nice. All right, beautiful. Moving on. All right, so, you know, everyone, given the nature of the campaign and the way it's going to start out, this might be less relevant, but everyone gets to pick two weapons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everyone gets to pick two weapons to start with, right? So uh, you can pick a primary and a secondary weapon. If those weapons require ammunition, you get to roll 1d6 on that. And I, you know, something the man and I have been talking about whether or not that, that really makes sense. Because if you were to pick something like uh, a mortar, you're then getting 1d6, you know, range or like mortars to shoot at people. Now, I, I still kind of like that because I think they're of limited use. But everyone gets to pick uh, two weapons, like I say, a primary and a secondary. And you can pick, there's no restrictions on whatever you pick. And then also, and you'll probably want to refer, because this chart's incomplete, you'll want to refer back to the uh, to the, the quick start guide. But everyone also gets one piece of equipment. So something like uh, binoculars or a loudspeaker or walkie-talkie. Something that's, again, there's a list in the book, but something that's kind of useful to you. And then lastly, you get an incidental item, right? And this is something that provides no uh, combat value, but might be useful, right? This could be... From a role-playing perspective, it could be a you know picture of a loved lost one. It could be a compass. It could be a map. It could be a Zippo. There really is no restriction on it, but it can't really have any combat value, and it can't really add in a meaningful way to any any uh, action rolls. Any, any questions on any of that? All right, perfect. So additionally, you also, you got, characters always start out with a survival kit, which is like basically a tent and a, 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 a tent and a sleeping bag and two days of supplies. But this campaign is going to start out a little bit differently. You're all going to be starting, you're going to be living somewhere, right? And so uh, you won't have any of that stuff to record on your sheet. So just make a note of your primary weapon, your secondary weapon, and then uh, any, any equipment that you take. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yep. Okay. And then lastly, uh, any final flavor, right? So uh, I, that, that, was, that was the entirety of, of backstory generation, right? So this is just a chance to look over the character sheet, make sure that you're happy with the skills. Is there anything you want to change at the last minute? Is there anything that doesn't make sense? Make sure that the three descriptive words you pick still make sense to you based on the character that you've created along the way. And other than that, we're, we're done. That makes sense to everyone. Any questions on uh, the character creation portion of the test or any, any, any kind of feedback, anything anyone's got about anything there? Uh, I'm trying to remember when you said for ammo it was how much? 1d6. 1d6, okay. Uh, for mm -hmm. gun? Yeah, for anything. Literally any, anything you pick, you get Literally a 1d6. Anything. Okay.
How are you guys coming? Do you need a couple more minutes, or are you uh, you you all good to go? I need a few more here. Right. You said two weapons, right? Correct. Yeah. I'm... All right, take your time. Enjoy enjoy the luxurious picking of items. So two weapons, and then what about the equipment again? One piece of equipment from the uh, the equipment chart, and then one incidental item. So one item that has like you know some value, like a, a toolkit or a, a walkie-talkie or something like that, and then just the the uh, the, the flavor item. All right. Um, I noticed in the spreadsheet that I downloaded. I know you have a drop-down menu for height. Yeah. Um, when I have downloaded, now granted, I'm using like LibreOffice. Um, it doesn't give me the drop down menu and I don't think it's letting me type anything. Yeah, it's giving me invalid value when I type it. Not that it really matters, it's flavor. How are you trying to do it again? I from from the Google Drive I saved the document and I'm trying to type into it and it doesn't give me an option for a drop downer. Yeah, it might be uh, better to open it in your browser. That seems to handle form fillable PDFs better. Oh no no no, I'm using the spreadsheet. Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. <laughs> uh, the character sheets will now take into account the dodge. Um, Tony, what's the end result? How many um, rapid and how many skills should you have at the end? Uh, <clears throat> in total, it is, hold on a second, let me just pull it up. I think it's 20 in total. Yep, it's 20 in total. It's five of those go to your attributes, and then the other 15 go to skills. No, nah, I'm going to go with it. Uh, I asked my wife for a name, and we're going to roll with this. Uh, apparently, my character's name is going to be Sven, which I guess would make sense, because, you know, Washington's close to Alaska, which is close to Russia. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's not a stretch. No, I totally get how you got there with that one. It wouldn't have been easier for him to have Swedish parents and just be called Sven because of that, right? No, I love to make things difficult. Yeah. That's, that's my MO as an IRL person. Let's find an, an easy problem to solve, and I'm going to get shit out of it. Relatable. As it should be. <laughs> All right, so equipment was one important thing and then one incidental. Correct. And for armor, we get everything? I get nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and actually, everyone gets, uh, everyone that wants one gets a basic anglers kit. Or maybe it was, called, I can't remember what I called it in the most recent version of the rules. Either basic anglers or fishing kit, one of the two. I have a pro one. Uh, so, sorry, equipment, what, what are we taking as equipment? Um, so you oh, get... The anglers kit. Yeah, so everyone, just because of the nature of where you are, everyone's got a fishing rod, right? And so um, you get the angler's kit, you get a primary, secondary weapon, you get a piece of miscellaneous equipment, you get the incidental item, and you get a basic angler's kit. Oh, I already said that. You got that twice. Is there a list somewhere of the equipment? Yeah, it's in the um, uh, the quick start. Do you need me to bring it up on the screen? <clears throat> uh, page 35 of it. 34, 35. Tony, is the PDF done in a really high resolution or something? Because, man, it clouds. Yeah. I, I can get you a lower resolution one if you want. Yeah, but there's, yeah. a, there's a low res version of the download on the page also. 
Well, let me put that in chat for you. There's a seven. There's a seven meg version coming across into the Home by the Sea chat channel. Six point three meg. There you go. I think that might just be your machine. Maybe, maybe it's because <laughs> is it because because New Zealand like because everything works like goes the other way around like the toilets and stuff. Is there anything to do with that? Carrier's forces. No. Oh man, you got so much shit we can drop on you. You use a Mac. You're from the land down under. Anything else we want to add onto that? I didn't know she was using a Mac. Yeah, it's, it's I'll, fine I'll... If, um, I can, you know, make your characters dead pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, I didn't know she was using a Mac. <laughs> So, for anyone that's on the Twitch, I have the list up on the screen at the moment of the different, uh, all, all the equipment. But, like Zero said, this page is uh, 34 to 35. So, I have a question, but it's more, I, I guess, from the campaign. Yeah. Um, well, I guess it's not really going to matter because I can throw that on the character sheet. You kind of don't really care about it in the spreadsheet sheet. So, I guess I'm going to hold off. So you're not even going to tell us what you were referencing then, is that right? Well, it is related <laughs> to the character and okay. some of the backstory leading in, so I guess not. Okay. <sighs> How many rations we got? Uh, two. Everyone gets two days. <clears throat> like it ties into something I was saying, Matt, and I think you were fixing the character sheet. Food's not, and we'll, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll get you oriented in a second, but food's not really an issue for you guys, where you are at the moment. I mean, it, I'm showing it on the Twitch, like the map of Astoria. You have a very nice seafront all the way around you, right? So you have two days rations, but that's really what you guys have just caught recently. Two days of pickled herring. Yeah. Thank you, Grumpster. That's what they call bear bait. <laughs> okay, bear bait. <laughs> oh, I also dropped you a token for, or a picture for a token. Oh, for beautiful. I know you guys do, you do separate colors and stuff around it, so I didn't want to mess with that. Hey, we're, we're, oh, oh, I see it. There's the token. Okay. I, I thought that image of the kid looking up, I just thought that was, that was a meme of some sort that I didn't get the relevance of. So, all right. Let me save that for the token. All right, beautiful. Thank you. Here's my dude. Nice. Oh, Lance Boyle. <laughs> Lance Boyle. So did you just look at two objects sitting on your desk when you came up with that name? or? Uh... <laughs> he was just thinking about his next doctor's visit. That's all it was. <laughs> so it's funny that you mentioned personal bodyguard or VIP bodyguard. We just watched the bodyguard like a week ago. With Whitney Houston. No, it was um, uh, Ryan Reynolds and Samuel oh. Jackson. Oh, 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 yeah, quite, quite a different one. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that one. Hitman's bodyguard. Oh no, it's like now, isn't it? Was it the Hitman's bodyguard? It's the second one. I wanted somebody with a, like a gun skill, and I didn't really want uh, law enforcement or, or military. So I thought, well, you know, a personal bodyguard. Sorry if my mic quality got worse. The phone's about to die. Now we're talking on speaker. Sounds good to me. That was like a very sad status report from some kind of space station that was crumbling to earth, the way that you made that comment there, John. <laughs> Roger Houston, over. <laughs> Do you want to create a... Um, looking at that. Oh, yep, that done. Tom, however you want it. I don't know 
why? It seems like I have a hot mic. I just see my little icon that's always green. I don't. It shouldn't be like that. So there's no feedback coming through, right? No, we're not hearing anything. Well, I'm not hearing anything okay. weird. Okay. Discord's really good at getting rid of back noise. So. Yeah. I mean, are you picking or do, if you have an idea of your character is, I don't need you to create a character sheet, but could you find an image online for who you want your character to be so I can create a token for you? Oh, sure. I'll try and find something. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Were you going to go with that uh, idea you had earlier? Yeah. I think. Uh, I'm typing it in and I guess I'll send you a screenshot or whatever. Tony, you got that image? I do. I'm creating a token for it now. Okay. I think I've got everything wrapped up on mine. Beautiful. And hey, Matt, can you send me, if you have it, can you send me a character sheet? Or, or a name or whatever you've got so I can, I can label this? Uh, teach. Teach. Hey, Zero, what, what's your guy's name? It was Lance Boyle? Yep. Lance Boyle. B-O-Y-L-E or B-O-I-L-E? B-O-I-L. B-O-Y-L-E. Okay, beautiful. Uh, my character's name is Maria. Maria. There's something about Maria. Yeah. <laughs> Maria is a Spanish name. When you make the tokens, are the, is there any kind of um, picture you're looking for in particular, like style or something? Or? No, just a JPEG, uh, uh, PD, uh, PNG, whatever, whatever you can find. Okay. I tried making one with uh, AI art. I'll show you the results. It's pretty cool, but it, it doesn't fit the theme. Yeah. I, I think I mentioned it before. I'm building up like a ridiculous amount of credits on Night Cafe. I need to actually start creating things. Oh, it's fun. Should have went with that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's much scarier. That feels like that may be more of a Sandman character rather than uh, a it distemper like, character. It looks like a badass character, but just not for this game. I agree completely. Blade Runner. That'd be my guy. I keep telling myself I'm going to watch the new one and I still haven't yet. I, I haven't finished it. All right, you guys still finishing up? I am ready. All right, beautiful. Did you upload the tokens? I did, I did. And I actually put them, uh, if you look on the first map, the, the dock, you should see them at the bottom. <clears throat> But I'm still I'm still creating. I just, literally just uploaded them just before you you'd said that. So I'm still creating, putting names on them and stuff. We're not going to have any active. Oh oh, do we have character sheets for them as well? 
Did you guys create your character sheets as you went? Oh, this is beautiful. No, uh, don't know. Uh, I created a character sheet for everyone. Yeah, no, it looks like everyone was doing it. This is great. So I'm looking through the character sheet. Do you, this combat actions one, do you legit get this set up for, oh, I see. Thread it. So you can actually click the action you want to do now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm just finishing with Sven now. Which one's Sven? The little kid. The... A little boy next to you, next to Teach. Yeah. So, so are you setting them up properly, or are you just setting them up as pictures? Uh, so I went in. I went into the character sheet in the journal. I hit edit, and then I did the you selected token at the bottom and uploaded their pictures. So I think that's the correct process, right? Yeah. I mean. I mean, my character sheet updated from photos, so I think it's right. No. Could you make a check for us, John, of, of any type? No, it won't work. It won't work. Okay. Because um, so you say. All right. So how um, how does that? How do I do that? Then I thought I went into so edit in the character sheet. Sorry, go on. So you see, you've typed in a name. Yeah. But it, up above it says represents which character. Okay, hold on. Hey, Matt, can you see the Twitch? Let me show you what I'm doing here so you can tell me where I'm going wrong. Can you see the Twitch? I mean, as far as being tied to the character, it's definitely working, but I think Matt's right. Yeah. Yeah, so see, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Attach that first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just type S. Just type S. Yeah, and then go to use case case. And now, stop, stop. Okay. Have it up again. Sorry. Uh, see over on the right hand side. Uh, green is uh, wounds. Okay. Uh, resilience for blue. Red point for red. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving too quick. Sorry, man. Yeah, just scroll down. Um, I normally do location. Uh, just leave it above. I do compact just so there's less going on. And then before you hit save, go up and again, slide the whole thing up, go to dynamic lighting. Uh, visual token can see. Oh, wait. And yep. Yeah, can see. That's it. And just click save. And Okay. And now go to the character sheet and make that the default token. All right. So that's the part I think I did earlier, right? So that's correct, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. You have to do it again. Okay. So select it. You yep. Select a token. So yep. Done. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Goonie Boy. Didn't he's like he's like the puppy who just heard he was going out on a walk. He's so excited. He keeps saying, "Save, save, save, save." So yeah. that one is correct. Wounds. Oh, did you already do your own one, Matt? Uh, yeah, I'm just doing that at the moment. Sorry. No worries. Uh, Let me do the last one. Yeah, and on the map page, last. I can verify it looks like it should. I see the numbers populated. Yeah. With the name and everything, so I think that's right. Uh, just remember to click the dynamic lighting yep. that they can see otherwise. Because of this is probably not. Uh, is there one more that isn't done? Because I can probably do that. Uh, I don't know. We have a. We I don't think we have a character sheet or a token yet for Mina. So I don't think there's anything to I'm do. Trying, for... I'm sorry. Hey, take your time. No one's, no one's hassling you. So I just don't think we have anything to add there. 
Hey, so Sven, can you now try your character and see if you can roll a token or see if you can make some kind of roll? Uh, won't be able to, but you will now. Okay. Try now. Okay, yeah, I tried doing it on that page and that didn't work, so perception. Uh, uh, token page. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick it back to Estonia and then drag you onto the map. There you go, try now. You see this huge bridge they have there? Ah, whoops, hold on now. I just posted a picture of it. The wrong page here. Uh, it's not sending it to... No, 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 no. Ah. Let me delete that token, there we go. What page do you want us to be on? Oh, hold on one second, let me... Let me move you... Just for the sake of a test, let me move you on to this page. So, John, if you can do your bottom left there, you'll see Sven. Um, I'm clicking it, and it's not... Whoops. All right, roll dreaded okay. perception. Yeah, All right, it's dragging me over to the chat window, but it's popping in the chat. And I do not see GM only checked, so that's not the problem. Uh, didn't work for me either. Hold on. Just restarting the thingy bopsies. Uh, uh, try again. Hey, there we go. Yep, been there. Beautiful. Jim, in your chat, you get to undo that perception roll. I you. see that now. I was wondering what that was. I'm going to do that. All right. All right. Beautiful. Hey, it's great. Hey, Lance, can you can you uh, make a roll for us? Oh, me? Yeah. Perception roll. Anything. There you go. Attack someone, baby. You did. Hey, you bad boy. <clears throat> Alright, beautiful. Hey, so while Mina's finding a token, let me just get you guys oriented, right? So um you should have I, I just moved the map screen. You'll see um three kind of like maps of a story just to kind of get you all oriented, right? So this is uh a fishing town, right? Uh traditionally. It's uh roughly ten thousand people, and I'm gonna move you on to a slightly different map there to kind of give you a sense of where we are. So just to kind of orient you, right? So um, <clears throat> this opens up, the campaign opens up around 402, or around, it opens up 402 days since the first recorded death, right? So today is April 13th. It's been about 100 days since the apex of the virus, right? Meaning that after a long winter where billions of people died, spring is finally here, right? The weather is starting to get a little bit nicer. And it's starting to feel like the uh, the worst might be over. And and yes, Fen, I I have a spreadsheet where I've tracked out the whole of the kind of the the uh, the virus and all the major dates, right? So 402, oddly specific because it fits into my timeline. So so again, been a rough winter, but it's starting to feel like things might be uh, starting to get a little bit better, right? It, it's uh, for months, everyone was keeping to themselves, right? But it's, it's been a while since anyone's died, right? It's been a while since you've heard of anyone dying from the dog flu. So people are starting to think that it's behind you, right? So, you know, you, you're living in Astoria, which again is, a, you know, at, at its height was 10 to 11,000 people. If you guys had to guess, you think there's somewhere like maybe north of 500, but way less than 1,000 people that are still in this town, right? It's, you know, you can't really guess as to the proportion of men and women, but it, it feels like you're seeing more and more people, right? There are a lot of people that were hunkered down. A lot of people have got their survival kit from uh, Costco when they saw the way the world was going and didn't leave the house for months. But it, it, it's starting to feel like you're seeing more and more people, right? So you're, you're in this area here. Um, you know, the, the local shops have all been cleaned out of, of food and like weapons and drugs. Like anything major has all been cleaned out a long time ago. But one thing that you guys have going for you in this town is that, um, you know, there's there's really not a shortage of food, right? And that's something, you know, because you can all go fishing, 
that there's it really hasn't been uh, as much of a hardship here as it's been elsewhere, right? And the fact that there's you know people are kind of saying hello to each other again, and people are starting to have normal-ish interactions. A lot of that is because again, there's just no food shortage, right? Anyone can go down to one of the piers that surrounds it, or just stand at the shoreline and just fish and catch stuff. So. It's kind of where you are at the moment, right? And and any questions before I move on to kind of where you are right now? Any questions on kind of the Astoria backstory or anything about this town? Any questions you've got about the history or anything to do with this town? So there's nothing really specific that happened here. We're just the victims of the death and that's about it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, there, there was nothing terrible like beyond the fact that, you know, everyone died. But there was nothing out of the ordinary, just like in a lot of places, the sickness came in and, and left with a lot of souls, right? And beyond that, you've all been kind of picking up the pieces. Very nice. That's a survivor. All right, let me, let me correct exactly. Is it Maria or Mariah? Hold on, let me just look it up. Oh. Maria with Maria. a... Maria, okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, while I create this token, any any questions on anything I said there on, uh, you know, anything to do with the town? Before I get into more specifics, anything to do with the town or the backstory or anything about anything? You said there's about 500 people, people left in town? Yeah, from so what you've seen. And what about the uh, the piers and all that? Is that pretty trashed up or, or are people still using boats? And, yeah. You know? you know, so um, we'll get into the what you guys know about each other phase in a second. Yeah, but, but Grumpster, you know, some of you may or may have not have seen Grumpster kind of wandering around the area. And it looks like he has a boat. But yeah, I mean, the, the world stopped pretty quickly, right? And so... The piers you go to, it kind of looks like a Sunday, right? And it kind of looks like tomorrow people are going to come back because whatever equipment was around or whatever boats were being worked on or whatever had been moored at the pier, it's all still there. Just like, and as happened, people just didn't turn up the next day, you know? So no fires in this area? No, you know, the... Um, there's, I don't know if you guys can see the Twitch, but there's a lot of area over here, right? So, uh, you know, the the there are the corpses were everywhere, right? But there was areas where the local uh, city council and, you know, with the police and the National Guard and whatever, they started burning the corpses, right? And so, like with a lot of places, there's a vague smell of death that kind of like lives in the town with you because there's a lot of houses that will still have corpses in them. But no, no fires, no no anything like that, no long-term destruction or anything along those lines. Just a side thing, you have this marked as a rerun. I have, I have what? Oh, on the stream and Twitch marked as a rerun. Really? I don't even know how to switch that off. All right. Um, in, your, in your Twitch settings. Well, I've got no idea where to get that from here. All right, does that make a difference? Like, does that mean people are not... I actually don't know that I, I care that much. But does that mean people are not going to be people, tuning in? People tend to tune in less. Got it. Okay. All right, I will figure that out afterwards, but thank you very much. I don't know how to fix that on the fly. Uh, let me just... Thank you, that would be awesome. Uh, any, any gangs? No, right? And... and People are starting to come out more, right? But no, you haven't seen any gangs. And so far, there's no one that's like, there's no overt struggles for leadership, right? But you have noticed that more and more, there are kind of gangs that are, oh, not gangs, sorry. There are kind of groups that are starting to form, right? So you're starting to see the same people over and over, kind of like wandering around together and kind of like going fishing. So no gangs, <clears throat> and no obvious hierarchy and no one trying to force their will onto anyone else but feels like that's just a matter of time to be honest you know great so we're all back in high school pretty much so there's no gunshots every day or anything it's just quiet and 
Yeah, you know, you hear gunshots in the distance every now and then, but it, it sounds more like hunting than anything else, right? It doesn't really feel like it's uh, kind of all that overly sinister. It's not followed by screams. It doesn't feel like there's anything too weird, right? And so there, there's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no actual law enforcement left in town as far as you can see, but there, you know, there's a guy that, and we'll get to how you guys are in the town and what you know about each other and so on. But there is a guy there that you all know used to be a, a judge, right? And he was either in like Arkansas or Kentucky or maybe Texas or somewhere. <clears throat> so no, we, we, we've had enough of judges. We know how they're like. Oh, don't we all, mate? Don't we all? But this guy, every now and then, um, you'll see him, right? And he, he's kind of like got an air of almost like authority around him. But so far, no one's really saying anything to anyone else about they're in charge. You're just starting to pick this stuff up. So if that's the case, are we walking around with guns or not? I assume we're not. If... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you guys tell me. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't think that it would be untoward to walk around with guns. But at the same time, like, no, one, no one's being particularly threatening around here, right? So not to say that you wouldn't have guns, but at the same time, you know, maybe you wouldn't have guns. I, I feel like if we're not really going through hardship, uh, in my mind, Washington is one of those states that probably has some regulation. So I would think that people probably generally wouldn't, especially if we're not seeing gangs starting. But I don't think anybody would be upset seeing somebody carrying one. I, that made sense. Yeah, I think that's very fair. I think that's a, a very uh, a very succinct summary of it. I just I just think the uh, always be. Hey, you may be fading out. You started like you started to say something, and then it dropped. What did you say? Okay, so it's not just me then. No. All right. I said uh, the nature of my character. I think he would just always be armed when he's outside. His. You dropped yeah. after when he's outside after he's something, right? But I, I think we got the gist of it that he would be armed. I don't think anyone would stop you, right? I don't think the you know. And again, we'll, we'll figure this out, right? But you wouldn't be the only people that would be armed. I just saw your comic graphs there. All right. So <clears throat> um, let's let's kind of move this a little bit along. Um, so as I mentioned, let me move something to a different layer. Um, oh man, I suck at roll 20 sometimes, right? Excuse me. So if you look at the map, so this area here this is where you guys have been fishing on a regular basis right so <clears throat> we're going to start out where that uh that that little circle is at the top and this is the fishing area right so i you know i'd love you guys to take a few minutes to just kind of fill each fill each other in on whatever anybody may know about your character do you know any of these other people right teach have you been taking Sven under your wing or Maria as any, you know, has Lance been flirting with you to the point where you're trying to stand on a different pier and fish. What do you guys know about each other? Or what, what does everyone know about your character? If anything, help me fill in these blanks. Is this up near a hotel? Yeah. Bow line is, um, that where I think you said you were standing on the notes you sent me this. Okay, yep. I just want to make sure cause it was cut off on the screen here. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't do a great job of putting that map on there. So that that's the bow line hotel. <clears throat> excuse me and if we go back to here one of these boats and you can pick whichever one it is this is where you've been locking your boat up because right next to it just off screen just here this is the bowline hotel so you've Perfect. been walking down here and this is your and if you have a better boat than this because i saw it had a name <clears throat> we can fix the token but this, one of these is your boat yeah because it's a fishing rig um I'll, I guess I could start really quick. Um, so my character has been here for about 10 years. So I guess nine before the flu. Um, and I'm a very sociable person and I've gotten to know a lot of the locals and I have a couple basic daily hangout spots. So if you're local to the area, then I know you or you know me. Hey, what, what do you tell people you did, by the way? Like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing, like, if anyone, you know, if you're standing fishing and someone says, what did you do before all of this went down? What What's your answer? 
<laughs> oh, I worked my way up. I started working in the fisheries. Um, I was in the processing as fish came in. And over time, I think I might have gotten tired of it. So I decided to fish on my own. It looked like it made more money. Beautiful. And that's where, and that's where you got the boat. And the boat is, uh, what did you call it? It's the SS One-Eyed, of course, how could I ever forget that? The One-Eyed Willie. All right, beautiful. <laughs> All right, who wants to go next? What do the other people know about you? That's what you know about Sven, but what, what do the rest of you know about each other? Uh, Teach moved in from Detroit uh, about three months before everything went to hell. Um, he, so some of the students will know, well, lots of the students will know, um, and some of the parents will know, but not much because he barely got his legs under the table before everything went batshit crazy. Um, he's an affable guy, but he is still quiet. He's incredibly loyal and he fishes off the pier every day. And if it looks like anyone is hungry, he will get one catch for himself and then offer whatever else he catches to anyone else on the pier. So he's making a name for himself as being a nice guy. Beautiful. And hey, mate, I, I think we established you live in just one of the houses that's just down the uh, just down the road from the uh, from the pier, correct? Um, yeah, I think so. Let me just pull up the map again on roll 20. So I, I think when I in, in my head. So again, this is where John lives at the moment of the bow, uh, the, the bow fight bow line. So this is obviously you can see the map for yourself, but I, I think you live somewhere around here, just like in this residential area. That, do you have any other plans, or does that work for you? No, that's fine. I, I partake of the silver salmon grill quite often. Right. I used to. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> Lance and uh, Maria, over to you. Um, oh, and by the way, so so um, Sven, move yourself over to your boat, wherever you want to be, and then teach. If you can position yourself on the uh, on the pier somewhere, wherever you'd be fishing, that would be great. And then finally, Lance Boyle and Maria, what 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 do, what, what does anyone know about either of you guys? All right, uh, Lance, he's not too secretive. He doesn't volunteer a lot of information, but he doesn't, um, you know, he doesn't hold back if you ask. He grew up um, in Oregon. Can you guys hear me all right? Yep, beautiful. All right. Yeah, he grew up, uh, maybe not specifically in this town, but just in the uh, in the Oregon area. Um, uh, you know, he, he grew up there, but then, you know, he moved out east to go see New York City and, uh, you know, to go to the big city, big life, and... Uh, but then once the, the shit hit, you know, he came back here to uh, look for his family and could not find them. But he is now living here. Uh, uh, his childhood roots. Who did he have, just out of interest, right? So when you say came back, like, was there mother, father, siblings? Was it just like his mom? Like, who yeah. came back? My mom, dad, and two sisters. Oh, wow. And have you... I find them. They're, they're gone. I don't have no idea. Do you, do you know if they're dead or are they just vanished? I, I have no idea. They're just missing. All right. All right. Perfect. Hey, Teach, same question to you. You came back for, did you say for your sister? No, I just transferred in from oh. Detroit. All right. Perfect. It's just perfect. a different, um, just a, a change of scenery. All right. Um, lots of years. Well, no, I've done maybe five to ten years in Detroit. And decided to uh, a, a bit of a slower life. All right, beautiful. Five to ten years would that be in a certain uh, size room? <laughs> no, he's a teacher. No, okay. I mean, <laughs> schools are kind of like prisons, I guess. Well, all, all the kids have done the <laughs> five to ten years, which is the reason he's moved away. <laughs> Get some quiet time. There's no reason you couldn't have been teaching in jail. I'm not saying you were. I'm just like going to John's question. When you say teach, I mean, it's a way of getting yourself, you know, it's a way of really getting yourself uh, at, on an early release there. Just saying. All right. All right, beautiful. Thank you for that. All right, um, Mar Maria, what have you got for us? Don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm 
Well, how did you end up in uh, Astoria? Did you live here before the virus? Did you uh, move back to try and find family? Like, how how did you end up here? Like, after the stuff hit the fan? Yeah. Or... Yeah, or were you here before that? I, I probably stopped here before... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I know. It's... I know. I... She had a bad past, but she knew some people. She came here to hopefully get something that, that she needed. That's why she came up here. Oh, I love it. All right, so... All right, I think I think your mysterious character is going to be coming to the fore in, in later uh, sessions. All right, beautiful. All right, so... so um, all right, let me, let me put your name on as well. I haven't done that. I haven't set you up properly. So... All right, so a, a couple more questions. So for Lance and Maria, where um, are you fishing? Is that what you're down at the docks for, or are you there for a different reason? Uh, yeah, why not? I can't, I can't see anything. Oh, you can't see the uh, the screen on row twenty. Yeah, I can't see anything. Oh, you can't see the uh, the screen on row twenty. Well, it's black. Uh, oh, you might have signed to it. Well, that wouldn't change the whole screen, right? I mean. I'll sort it. You keep going. All right. All right, beautiful. Lance, can you put... Are you, are you on the... Um, we got to go... Well, I've got, I've man got my secret fishing, fishing spot, so I'm going to move over to the secret spot. It's right here. The, sec the secret fish fishing really, spot? Yeah, they really like hiding underneath the pier right here, so that's my secret spot. Beautiful. <laughs> so... So we're, we're going to do a couple of things, right? So um, I, as I mentioned, I'm going to be checking out some different systems, right? So what one of the, you know, it's obviously a survival game in many ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. So one of the, the aspects of it is being able to, to secure food on a regular basis, right? So days in the game are split into activity blocks, right? There's two activity blocks a day, so you could do a couple of things. So really, it's like a four-hour block in the morning, kind of pre-lunch, where you guys are all standing on the pier and fishing. So can you all make a survival check to see how you do during the first few hours? And, and, and Gramster, what, what are you doing, right? I see you by your boat, but tell me, tell me what it is that you're planning on doing. Are you taking the boat out or are you coming back in it? What, what are you doing there? Uh, if it's the first survival block, chances are um, I'll probably be getting ready to take it out. All right, beautiful. Because I'm, I'm going to assume, well, I actually want to assume, I'll ask. Um, I'm assuming the fishing community is still working. Um, is there just going to be, uh, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm not the only fisherman that's still here. Um, is there like some of us that are still out and we kind of have a little quid pro quo going that we bring food in and we get some stuff for it? You know, so yeah, right. So um, tell me a little bit about your boat. Like how, how much do you think you'll be hauling in a day? And would you need to go out with someone or is that like a one-man boat? Like like fill, fill in those gaps for me. Um, I'm going to envision something like Forrest Gump. Um, just a small enough that, you know, I can, I was providing on my own and probably a little extra to twirl away. So I, I, that's probably about the size I'd come up with. So I, I assume I could probably handle it myself if it was the second person so on a on a um, on a normal or a good day how much do you think you would be able to uh to capture actually let me quantify that right so if, if for a normal fishing check let me put this into chat so you guys can I see wish i knew <laughs> well and hey matt are you able to do you see that that screenshot from mina that's super weird just refreshed it it looks good oh perfect good to know good to go perfect yeah, cool. all right all right so <clears throat> excuse me for every activity block you spend um, fishing you either make a hunting or a survival check which a couple of you have done and if you're successful you get two two rations right so the idea being on a good day if you're out fishing for four hours you catch enough fish to feed you one person for two days does that logic kind of make sense mm -hmm. so so Sven, going back to your boat, in a, <clears throat> I think wow, you're, I a bad day. <laughs> oh mate, yeah, you might need to get some help, so you got nothing, Lance, you got another two days rations, Tej, you got two days of rations, 
<clears throat> Maria, are you going to be out fishing with us, or are you um, are you just kind of like sightseeing and seeing what's going on here? I'm hanging out on the docks and just watching everything. Okay, so that salty, fishy air. I don't blame you. Who doesn't want a bunch of that like in your nostrils, right? So. <laughs> Sven, you know, it's kind of getting close to lunch, right? Um, you know, a couple of you teach, uh, you had a little bit of success. And um, Lance, you had some success over in your secret spot. Maria, you've just been wandering around. I'm actually going to pretend you're an artist. So you've had a sketch pad and you've just been wandering around kind of drawing uh, pictures of people. And Sven, you're, you're coming in, right? So <clears throat> you're a little bit frustrated because you spent the morning out there. And I don't know if the boat is too much for you to handle on your own or whether the fish just weren't biting. But it wasn't a good morning for you. But as you kind of pull back in, Teach, who I'm guessing you're both kind of amicable guys, so I'm guessing you two have seen each other before. Is that, is that about right? Uh, if he's yeah, been here so. for at least three months beforehand, I'm sure I've run into him. All right, beautiful. <clears throat> so... Um, Teach, as Sven's coming in, like, what, 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 do you, what are you two, uh, kind of walk me through kind of your interaction, how, you, how, how you're kind of greeting each other, or what's going on between you? Sven, what do you do with your fish when you bring them in? Uh, well, normally I take them to the fishery and um, drop them off and let them get processed there, although I do have experience in doing it, so... I'm, I would assume, it depends on how many people are going to be available, but I would probably just bring them in and process them myself. So it's, four, it's 400 days since reality kicked out, yeah? What are you doing now? Uh, if I have a quick right? pro quote going on, I'm probably doing the same thing as long as everything's amicable. Although I'm keeping a closer eye on my vessel. <laughs> Actually, that would be a good question, Tony. Um, I had asked you... Uh, is my buddy still alive or no? What are your? Let me let me pull up your character sheet. What what is your motivation? Actually, don't answer that. Let me let me look at this. You don't have to blow it for the uh, for the rest of the group. Well, the one would be not really. Well, actually, all three of them wouldn't really. Two of the people definitely wouldn't be a secret. I mentioned having a girlfriend for two years, and then a best friend. That up to you whether he worked at the fishery or was also a fisherman. Are either of them alive? You know, I, I no, no, ni neither of them made it through. Okay, then I'll say I'm just having a shit day, and it's just not working out this morning. You don't know the secret spot. <laughs> Apparently not. Teach. I've lost my touch over the last year. T teach lifts up a. Um... A big, big one by the gills. It says, uh, <laughs> no lucks again, Sven. Here you go, man. Uh, grumble under my bro. Uh, my put a smile on their face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know if he was intending to be friendly or a dick there, but he kind of came across as a bit of a dick. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's uh, Matt sleepless not or if Teach is just not the nicest guy. All right, so. <laughs> <clears throat> Sven, as you're kind of coming down, you see this guy, he's on a bike, right? And he, he, he's riding up and he, he, he waves. This is a little girl, right? She's just kind of, this is a whoever's looking after her guardians. This little girl just kind of keeps running backwards and forwards on the pier. So this guy comes up and he stops and he, he has a little conversation. And Sven, this is as your, your boat is pulling in, right? So you and Teach both see this. But this guy pulls up, has a small conversations with this guy. He seems to be super friendly, right? Everything's above board. They kind of smile and wave at each other. <clears throat> and then he kind of drives down to you, right? So you, you know this fella, right? This guy on the bike, his name is Mark. And he, he, he's, uh, he's, he's kind of, he's turned into the closest thing to a professional scavenger that you've seen since the pandemic, right? So he's always on a, on a bicycle. He seems to spend his day just riding around either, you know, in the region or maybe a little bit further. And he always seems to have found something new, right? And so he kind of cycles up to you and he, he, he waves at you and says, hey, Sven, good morning. And he, he looks over at Teach and he's a little bit uncertain because Teach seems to be a bit of a dick deep down. So he looks over and he kind of nods at you, but he, he's a little bit more friendly to you, Sven. And he kind of says, hey, Sven, how's the fishing? You got anything you want to trade? Ugh, not today. Today's, today's not a good day. Oh, I mean, mate. I had a couple of them real close, but... 
he, he laughs at you and he says, oh, you're not going to tell me the story about the one that got away, are you? And then he kind of says, he, he, he breaches into his jacket and he pulls out a handful of chocolate, like dime bars and like million dollar, whatever, right? Pulls out a bunch of things and he's kind of like, these did not get away from me, Sven. I put my effort into this and look, I was rewarded by fishing in a gas station somewhere. Got anything you want to trade for these? And you're super excited, Sven, right? Like when you see chocolate bars, like, I mean, that that's kind of a rarity 400 days in. So this is... Not a big deal, but this is this is uh you you know your stomach growls a little bit. Well, you know, isn't that the story of One Eyed Willie, just the one that almost got away? Oh, how about this? Uh, uh, I'll pay uh, for a hamburger Tuesday. Give me one today. I, he laughs and he, he he you know he stops short of telling you to 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 fuck off, but he calls you Popeye, right? He's a wimpy, right? So he's kind of like, yeah, okay, wimpy. That sounds like an absolutely delightful deal so you know realizing that you don't it doesn't seem like you have anything to offer or, or anything in exchange he looks over at you teach and says hey what about you big man do you want any of this and he's got the chocolate bars held up for you so uh, i'm just confused how i'm an asshole and this guy is an asshole to sven <laughs> and i've offered fish to sven um because he didn't catch anything and, and i'm the a-hole <laughs> um, I'll swap. Um, I'll happily swap out both my fish for well, actually, my two days fish uh, for um, a few of those chucky bars. Yeah, he kind of, you know, he, he kind of gives you a, 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 a less than ideal look, right? He's kind of like, yeah, you know, come on, this is this is this is good prime chocolate here. This isn't even past the sell by day yet. And you're offering me stinky fish from the sea. You got nothing else? Uh, no, just goodwill. You know, uh, I, I, you know, going back to, he points over his shoulder at, 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 <clears throat> at Wimpy and says, Even you're just fishing in other people's houses. You know I mean? That's, that's... He, Oh mate, he does he does like pearl necklace time. Like he puts his hands up. Like it looks like you may have just offended Mark, right? Like he, he you know, he, he takes great pride in the fact that he's only been scavenging from the highest quality commercial like uh, operations, right? He's not breaking into people's houses, so he's a little bit offended by how you just regarded him there. Nice for him. As far as teachers concerned, that's just stealing basically anyway. Oh dear, yeah, you, you're certainly getting around this kind of like this, this, uh, this, this uh, not the nicest guy image, Matt. I don't know how you're doing it. Um, <laughs> all right, so, <clears throat> so he says to you, well, look, how about this? How about you give me the two you got today, and then you give me another two later in this week for one of these chocolate bars? And how does that sound? You offer it? Does that sound if like I'm, a reason? Come around Thursday, and I'll give you Thursday's catch as well. You know, so um, he, he, so Matt, you, let, let me ask you, you: you are a generally affable guy, right? Yep. All right, beautiful. So he, he, he smiles and he says, "Like, hey, you got a deal." So he, 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 there's three chocolate bars. Which one of those do you want? He offers you. You don't have to name it, but he offers you. You can take your pick of any of the three of them. Uh, was there one that Sven looked at particularly nicely? Um, his eyes light up? Sven, that's over to you, mate. Was there? Did he have a, ch a chocolate bar that really made your knees go a little bit weak? Uh, I'm trying to remember what you said. If it was a hundred grand, I mean, I'm a sucker for Goonies. <laughs> I don't think I saw it anyway, so I'll just pick the closest one, and then I'll um, I'll throw it over to Sven and say. Um, uh, there'll be be more fish in the sea tomorrow. Put a put a smile on that uh, friendly face of yours. He cracks a side grin and says, ah, "All right, I come over and I'll split the bar with him." So, Mark. So, yeah. So <coughs> you 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 eat it, son. I'll. Um, I'm trying to watch my weight. He says as he pats himself. He's a, he's a huge guy. Oh, hey, if you ever want to get off the dock, you can always hitch a ride and get out and uh, stretch the old sea leg. Who, who are you saying that to? Is that to teach or is that to Mark? Oh, to teach. 
Yeah, Mark has zero interest. I'm not sure how Teach feels about that, but, you know, Mark has got... Uh, he, he, he kind of taps his bike and he's like, yeah, the sea's for you freaks. Like, I, I, I like to find my fish on dry land. Yeah, these freaks are the ones that are keeping you fed, boy. <laughs> oh, Sven's kind of spiky. I like that about Sven. Mark has just been a tool to everybody. <laughs> That's who he is. That's kind of who he is. Yeah. He's just one of those guys, right? He's he's friendly enough and he's nice enough, but he just can't seem to help but be an absolute dick to people. So that's just kind of part of Mark's characteristics. So he he, he finishes, he gives you his uh he, he gives you the chocolate bar and then he kind of holds the two fish up that you just handed to him. And he doesn't love them, right? He's he's uh you know, he's got some string in his pocket and he ties the tails together and puts them over his handlebars. And you can see from the way he's rubbing his hands together, he feels a little bit too uh He's a little bit too precious to enjoy fishing. Well, as he rides away, I'll say, you better bring a fox tomorrow. A fox? A box. Oh, a, bo <laughs> a box. Yeah, you know, maybe next time I I I'll throw that into the deal. He kind of laughs at you as he starts walking away with his bike. And then he, he, he's, he's heading down towards this, this end of the pier, right? Kind of heading up this way to see if these guys have got anything to trade. But he, 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 you know, he asks you, um, let me just bring this over again and show you. So on this map, if you can see it, uh, let me bring another thing up. All right. So <clears throat> he makes mention to you that um, this evening, you know, he kind of talks about you. You're all obviously starting to get to know each other a little bit. Right. So every night for the last few weeks. There's uh, what seems to be what what's, you know, people are jokingly calling like the oldest man in the town now. Um, there's an old fella who goes to McClure Park, which is right here, um, every evening and starts a fire, right? So it's like a bonfire and now like more and more people are going down there and it's becoming kind of a regular thing, right? Most of you can see it from where you live. You can either see the fire like from the Bowline Hotel where Sven, you live, you can see it. Teach, you can see it from the house that you're living in. It's just down the street from that. So Mark asks you, or says to you, hey, so tonight's Tom's 71st birthday, right? So what do you guys think? Are you going to be going down to join him for his, uh, his little campfire? And then he holds up one of his chocolate bars and says to him, I'm going to give this to him as a gift. I'm not even going to make him give me anything for it. So you guys going to go to, to old Tom's barbecue this evening? Of course I'm going to go. Wouldn't mess up for the world. Teach, are you ignoring him? Um, yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Teach has gone back to fishing. All right, so... I'm just going to go back to fishing. Pretend I didn't hear him. Yeah, Mark starts to amble off, right? So, um, Sven... Sorry, Lance, did you... Remind me, did you... You did catch a fish, so you were able to catch yeah. a fish over this side. All right, so uh, end of the first activity block, right? And and again, uh, Maria's just been wandering up and down and kind of, you know, taking sketches or making sketches. Sven didn't catch anything, right? So there, there seems to be, you know, you, you consider it maybe breaking and going for lunch or maybe going to stretch your legs because it feels like you kind of, you know, you've had a good morning or in the case of Sven, you've had buckle. And then you start to hear something, right? And it sounds like this, the, the noise of uh, commotion, right? So just over here where you see these two guys, <clears throat> excuse me, they seem to be jostling each other, right? This is kind of pole position over here. And these two are kind of getting from what seems to be, uh, you know, almost like ragging each other. And it's turning kind of antagonistic and their voices are raising, so it's getting the attention of everyone on the pier, right? So Maria, I mean, you can hear it because you're kind of closest. And then Lance, you're coming towards them, but you can hear it. But, but how are you guys reacting to it if you're reacting to it, right? Are you, are you reacting to it? You're just going about your day? What is, this, what is this kind of little confrontation or argument? What's it doing for your psyches? Say, hey, keep it down. You're going to scare away all the fish. There's enough room here on the pier for everyone. So this guy, Gordon, Gordon Bennett, um, turns around and he, 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 he's, he's not exactly rude to you, right? But he's obviously frustrated. And he, he says, yeah, that's easy for you to say. He said, every time I turn around, Barry's fucking with what I'm doing. He said, you know, I, I, you know I, I've got my kid at home. He said, I'm trying to catch food. Barry's just a single guy anymore, right? And Barry, you know, rankles to this and, and obviously doesn't like the fact that, 
you know, it, th this is turning into a, a drag Barry session, and Barry's kind of like, "Hey, man, like, 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 leave my family out of it, right? Everyone lost people in the pandemic." So this argument's going backwards and forwards, and they're not really listening, to Lance. It feels like this is, you know, m maybe um, an ongoing tension between the two of them that's kind of like reached a boiling point at the moment. So the argument's going on because Gordon really feels like Barry's overstepping and basically stealing his fish, despite the fact they're at this pier. Now, how well do I do I know them? Is it true that Barry is riding Gordon and Gordon keeps to himself, or is that just a bunch of BS? You know, so if you're coming down there on a regular basis, you've seen these guys, right? And it does feel, you know, um, it feels like they're standing close to each other every day, right? And you don't really know them, but you'd kind of assume that they were friends, right? But this really doesn't seem like friendly behavior. So, Lance, you know, given your given your background, and let me look at your character sheet really quick, but given your background, it may behoove you to make some kind of check based on your... You know what you've seen over the years right so it could be a perception check it could be a tactics check if you've got tactics it might be psychology it could be anything really that kind of gives you an insight into to what's going on between these two well i have perception so matt's favorite let's have a perception check out of you yeah so you know th this from the outside and just given your kind of uh given your background and your observance of people given what you do it, it does feel like this is real tension between them right it kind of looks like i mean they're, they're they're kind of like like slapping at each other now right kind of like snapping each other's hands and stuff so it feels to you like this is real but it, it also doesn't feel like this is real anger and violence right if you had to guess about it it feels much more like this is just overflowing tension or maybe you know, someone's hit their breaking point, right? The, the, you know, the, the, all the loss and everything that's gone on, or maybe the pure fish diet for the last couple of months. Feels like Gordon's kind of losing his mind a little bit. All right. Well, if they're not in serious danger of hurting them, I'm just going to let them have at it. I'm not going to keep, you know, interjecting myself into it. Okay. Um, unless, unless I think it's going to get serious, then I'm, you know, then I'll just have to go over there and physically do something. Well, so, you know, maybe it's getting there, right? So uh, in terms of uh, Sven and T, it, it's starting, the noise is becoming noticeable for you guys as well. So how are you reacting to it? What, what are you doing? I'm just going to nod over there and say, uh, there's only 500 of us living in a place that's big enough for multiple thousands, and these two guys still occupy the same piece of wood on this pier. Hey guys, there's plenty enough to go around for everybody. So let's have. Um, is this? And again, I mean that you, you're just kind of shouting out, and they're in the middle of it. So I guess the question to you, and not trying to lead the witness, and this would go to Mina as well. Are, are any of you going over or trying to truly inter intercede, or are you just kind of like shouting at them, like you know, shut up, calm down? What what is it that you're actually doing? Uh, I'm going to assume if I recognize them and they're always over here, I'll probably start walking my way over to talk them down. I'll back up, Sven. All right, so as you get closer, it starts to ramp up, right? I mean, they're, they're you know, Gordon said a couple of things that seem to have really got under Barry's skin, right? And it's it's really wound him up. So, uh, uh, and they're starting to put hands on each other's, right? So as you guys get over there, they're kind of grabbing each other and it's really, you know, it feels like they're trying to pull it, the other one away from the spot and establish dominance. So, so this is all unfolding. So walk me through what it is that you guys are doing to try and stop it, if anything. So from the shutting, you were saying the one who's got a family is arguing about the one who's got a fish and stuck him in. Buried guy. Bingo. So the guy on the left is claiming the guy on the right <clears throat> is is unfairly taking food out of him and his daughter's mouth, he's saying. All right. Well, if um, no one grabs him first, I'm going to go over and try and grab a hold of Gordon. All right. So are you physically going to grab a hold of him or are you um, walk me through how that's happening? Like what, what you're actually doing? 
are they pushing and shoving each other or are they actually going to hold each other? Yeah, they, a little bit of both, right? It's kind of like, and, and to be clear, it, 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 you know, Sven, you're a little bit hardier than these two. And if you had a guess, neither of these men have actually ever had a fight in their lives, right? So there's a lot of, you know, as we say in the UK, handbags at dawn do you know what i mean like there's a lot of kind of like posturing and and strutting and yeah they're grabbing each other but it, it doesn't really feel all that serious at the moment it's not like one of them's gonna you don't get the sense one's gonna pull out a shiv and shove it into the other one's ribs can i uh, right. look, look okay. at vin and say uh i think they need to cool off <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> um Probably what I would actually do is probably step between them, but face Gordon since he's the one that's talking shit. You're not going to join, join Lance in pushing them over the side then? Uh, not yet. Okay. So let's have you make whatever you think is, is an appropriate check, right? So um, I, I haven't looked at your character sheet as spam, but inspiration charm maybe um uh, you know in, intimidation what, whatever you think is going to be the appropriate skill to wind these guys down so i'm gonna try to uh, we'll just try to inspire uh the, the married guy because he's the one that's talking shit it's like you know we've all had it tough blah 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 blah, blah. you two are friends blah blah <laughs> That's convincing. That is. So it's very good, isn't he? It's going to be like an eight or a dire fail. So. And if he's if he's talking to Gordon, <laughs> can I try to distract to Barry? Do I'm sorry, what? If you're trying to talk down Gordon, I'll try and distract Barry and get him to come yeah. up to me. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Figured. <laughs> oh. It's like we all been through this because you know. He's catching the eye and... and that didn't take well. Yeah, I didn't distract him either. These guys are coming to blows. It, it is starting to look that way, isn't it? Um, yeah. I might have to take initiative then and try to shove them both in at the same time. If it, if it you know, if they are too pissed now. I'm going to shove them in there. If they're not the piss yet, then no. Yeah, so so they're doing that Jerry Springer thing, right? Where Sven's in between them, and Gordon's using Sven as a wall between him and Barry, right? So he can't actually come to blows, but he's kind of pushing against Sven. Like, it's kind of like Sven is the only thing in the world holding him back, right? So there, there's this kind of like forwards and backwards going on, and Gordon really is ramping it up, right? So Barry doesn't look like he's trying to start a fight. But this is really ramping on Gordon's side. It looks like Gordon, again, is is almost taking you being in a way or in the way as a way of him ramping this up without being physically hurt. Hold me back, hold me back. That kind of thing. It's a good job you're holding me back or I'd kick his ass, that kind of thing. All right, then I will hold him back. I'll, I'll pull him back. Let's see, if it, <laughs> let's see if it works. Beautiful. All right, so... <clears throat> So let's have you make a, a grappling attempt, right? So he, he really, he, he, there's no need for uh, an initiative check here, right? He, he really is uh, kind of so distracted by his argument with Barry that you'd basically get a kind of a free go at him. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so what did you just do there? Let me get my window back up. Did that? Oh, okay, here we go. I don't know if I can Post click rolls. him. No. It's a post roll, so you click on what you want to use as your um, your skill to uh, grapple, and then GM will do his skill, and then figure out who won. Ooh. Oh, oh well, look at that. At least you got an inside dice. I, I, I kind of secretly love that a little bit, right? The you know you yeah. you got it, it. It went horribly wrong, but at the same time. You pushed him into the water. So you tried to grapple him, and he totally loses his balance, right? So poor Gordon topples into the water, and you see a look of abject terror on his face as he goes down. And as he, you know, he goes in and he comes up, and the only thing he manages to scream is, I can't swim. So it looks like you may have just killed him. It looks like if you don't do, yeah, slipped on a jellyfish. If you don't want to do anything now, I think his punishment for causing 
you know, disruption down of the jetty was, was death. I think you executed him. So what do you guys okay. want to do? He, he's bubbling around, right? So again, he's, he's flopping up and down. He's obviously not dead yet, but he's flopping up teach and down. Oh, Teach. Teach is jumping in. Fucking hero you are. <laughs> All right, so Teach, let's have you make an athletics check. Yeah, this is going to go well. Yeah, he looks so athletic. Yeah. While he's doing that, I'm going to look around for some rope <clears throat> that I can tie off and uh, throw down. Yeah, on any of these, there's that old barnacle covered robe, like on any of these posts that you see, right? You'd be able to get one. Oh yeah, my god! Yeah. What about I'm like a buoyancy aid? Get that, Daniel. You are. <laughs> All right. So, so you managed to put. His head above the water. Yeah, you're doing well, and he's flapping, and he's really kind of like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So you've got him. What what is your plan now with him, Teach? And what are the rest of you doing? I'm going to throw the rope down so at least he can hold on to it and not have to tread water. All right, perfect. All right, so that that won't be... No need to check that, right? The, the rope's there. You can throw it down. But, uh, Teach, let's have you make another athletics check, but with a plus one C mod uh, for the rope, right? So that you can pull yourself and Gordon with the rope over to the uh, to this, the closest kind of stand-up point. I'm just, I think I'd just wait there. While he's flapping until he slows down and calms down, and I don't keep telling him to calm down until he's calmed down, then I'd give him the rope. Oh, he, he's trying to climb on your bald little head, right? I mean, he, he he's, he's so grateful to you for saving him, but he can't swim, right? So he's not going to calm down any more than he is at the moment because he, he's still petrified. That even though you've saved him, he still thinks he's going to drown. There you go. All right, you're able to pull both of yourselves out of the water onto the jetty. And he is, I mean, he can't stop hugging you, right? I mean, Gordon is, like, just so grateful. <clears throat> Barry runs over and, it, you know, kind of scolds him, right? And he's kind of like, hey, Gordon, what are you doing, man? Like, what are we doing? Like, like I, I don't care about this fishing spot enough that you're going to drown, man. Like, we've got to find a better way of resolving our conflict. So it looks like these two are going to make nice with each other. But Gordon looks at you like like you're his personal hero now teach like you you, you saved him because he really didn't know how to swim he would have drowned when you said skull they thought you were like legit gonna start tearing him apart it was like this is completely your fault blah. <laughs> and i was about to go throw barry in <laughs> no 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 it's really more of a like hey like this this wasn't worth you nearly dying over like i'll stand 10 foot away from you you can have the left side i'll have the right side from now on So as, as you're kind of shaking off like a wet dog, Teach, <clears throat> Mark comes up on his bike and he kind of like does a little clap for you. And he was like, that was really impressive. I didn't think he had that in or you had that in you. And he, he pulls out his chocolate bars and he says, hey, we can forget about the two more on Thursday. And how about you take one on the house? So he offers you one more of the chocolate bars just because like, you know, it, 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 Anyone that does anything vaguely charitable these days feels like you're a hero, given that everything that's gone on. So, Matt, that would... Well, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And I'll give that to... Was it Barry that said his kids were... It was Gordon. Gordon was under the cosh with his kids? Yeah. I'll um, throw it to Gordon and say, hopefully this will keep your kids happy, at least for a little bit. And it's nice that you're um, playing nice with each other. So let's keep it cordial. So Mike, Mike rides off and you hear him grumble under his breath. What a dickhead uh, about teeth. Like there's two chocolate bars that have gone your way that have gone to somebody else. So, all right, he, he rides off most unimpressed. Uh, the, these two are kind of like, they're, they're making up now. Um, and they're kind of like, they, they agree. Gordon's got to go home and get changed. Barry's going to go with him, make sure he's okay. So these two kind of head out. What are you guys going to do for the remainder of the day? And you, you don't have to hang around here. You can you can leave and go back to your house or do whatever. But is there anything you'd want to do before evening falls? Uh, I'm contemplating hiding a stick near my clothes. It shows up, I can shove it in the spokes. <laughs> well, your stick, your say, boat, mate. Have at it. I was say, I'll, I'll, um, go Sorry, go ahead. <clears throat> go ahead. Uh, uh, kind of like explore and maybe loot un uninhabited houses. Do it. So, 
Maria, how new are you to the place? Are you new post pandemic or pre? Um, I've been here before, so I'm sort of familiar. But and have I'm you been familiar. keeping to yourself? Yeah, I've been keeping to myself. I'm not interacting with any of y'all fools. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, in that case, I'd probably walk back to the boat and on the way and see Maria and start interacting, saying, hey, you're a new face around here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, you one of the starry-eyed tourists like everybody else who shows up here? <laughs> You know, I know where the Goonies house is. I can show you. Well, that's okay. Thanks. No, it's interesting. Oh, Sven, it's the smell of fish, mate. It does it every time for you. I know. <laughs> if you didn't smell so fishy, I would probably have been all over you. <laughs> the lucky I had a girlfriend for that. <laughs> Teacher's going to um, try and catch the smallest fish that he can for Thursday's catch. So hey, hey, he let you off with that. He was so impressed with your humanitarianism that he let you off with the debt and gave you a second chocolate bar. So you you owe him nothing. Okay. No, it's a dick bag at this point. Yeah, I'm still gonna give him the shit as well. <laughs> All right, so make another um, hunting or survival attempt, teach, and let's see what you catch in the second activity block. Um, have we come up with like makeshift power for refrigeration or are we still, you know, so, so the town, uh, thank you for that. that I should have mentioned that in the summary. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the power's still on, right? So, um, until relays start to fail, right? I mean, over time, everything will like, you know, atrophy and everything will start working. But right now, you don't have to worry about that, right? Right now, you've still got power on in the town. Your fridges are still working. You've even got running water. There's just no uh, water processing or cleaning plants. So you don't really like drinking it without boiling it first, you know? Nice. All right. And <clears throat> Matt, I just gave you, um, I just added the chocolate bars to your uh, to your character sheet and let me give you some some rations as well for the fish catching i gave away the chocolate bars you I did was, you want me to keep oh them? shit i forgot oh yeah delete those yeah um hey lance what are you doing for your second activity blog you you fishing or you wandering off you exploring you said yeah i'm gonna explore a little bit you know there's uh like empty houses oh, yeah, i'll go go inside check for uh you know loot ammo beautiful well look um there's there's i think you can see it on the uh on the screen at the moment so the or the map of the town is up so this is where you were right in that upper pink square or the upper pink circle i should say this is mcclure Park, where there's going to be the bonfire this evening where tom's going to start one for his like birthday party there's a bunch of stuff around here right and feel free to look at the uh the real map i'll put a link to it in the chat <clears throat> but w where are you heading and what kind of thing you're looking for? Is it houses? Are you looking for businesses? What kind of thing are you uh, looking to scavenge yeah, or loot? Residential houses. All right. I imagine businesses and most of that stuff has already been checked through. So I imagine uh, residential houses, you know, just cupboards and closets and other places that people maybe have overlooked if they've already been searched once. All right, beautiful. Well, let's have you make a um, a scavenge check. Did it roll? Uh, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. I was on the wrong ribbon page. There you go. Try that again. Sorry about that. Hey, nice. <clears throat> All right. So um, roll 2d6. And 
you got um, 1d6 of batteries. So roll a 1d6. So you found two batteries. They could be of any size. So if you had a flashlight, they'd be able to power those. If you wanted to put them into your inventory or your pocket, keep them for later. They're the kind of things that you'd be able to... Uh, uh, to, to to negotiate or to to barter with someone like Mark, right? If he came along and wanted to trade. So you found, you spent four hours looking and the houses you'd been to felt like they'd either been picked clean or there was shit there. You just found two batteries in a pack in someone's bedside drawer. So a uh, 2D cell, I think that's a good size for... Uh... You may have broken up again. Say that again. Two D cell batteries, because I think that's a good size for flash. So, find a flash. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, hey, um, a flashlight would be a very common item. So, make a second scavenge check with a plus two C mod. All right, you found a flashlight as well. So let me add that to your inventory. <clears throat> you found a flashlight with uh, with two charges. So congratulations, you. All right, you now have a flashlight in your kit or in your uh, equipment. And that feels like that was a good afternoon's work for you. You kind of took a few hours, but you're kind of thrilled that you found like brand new batteries and a flashlight because who knows when the power is going to go out, right? And, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's always good when you're um, kind of like, you know, stockpiling shit that you might need for the future. That, that, that feels like a bit of a win for you. Nice. Yeah, congrats. I'm ready for the barbecue now. Ah, oh, beautiful. All right, so... Um, Maria, anybody else? Is there anything anyone's doing or anything anyone wants to do before we move to the barbecue? I figure at this point, after I've tied off, if Maria's still here, um, I'm probably, from my day out, going to be not like in the second day, so I'm probably going to go to the fishery and see if they got any other stock they need processed. Um, I'm going to pass by Maria in the on the way and tell her that there's a about the barbecue that's going on in case you didn't know and ask her if she wants to be my plus one on the way out there meet some people okay <laughs> man she goes from being a dark horse to an easy date i like this <laughs> well, if you want uh, if you want meet me uh i'm up in the bow line so if you go up to the top floor uh, it should be pretty easy to find my room meet me at uh at dusk and we'll head on over and like, did you take the penthouse at the bow line? I, 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 let me look up that hotel and see what it's like. But did you get the top floor kind of penthouse? Um, I don't know if they took a penthouse. I just wanted a vantage point to be able to keep eyes on the boat. Okay. So I'm not really picky, but if it's available, I certainly would take it. Yeah, I might be overstating what would actually count as a penthouse in this place. Let me put it into. <laughs> uh, let me put it into. High rollers. Came. No, that's probably if they have them. That is the bow line. Yeah, th this. I mean, it looks super cute, right? But it, it looks very much like a like a beaten down kind of hotel on the the beach. So, I actually, I'll, I'll look it up and I'll see how many rooms there. But I kind of like this as a base of operations for you. And there is the jetty out back. Like I said, you kind of walk out onto it from from where you are. This, this is very thematic. All right. <clears throat> All right. This is really where you should have applied to the bow line and got some advertising in for it. Yeah. Maybe it's not too late. Um, maybe they'll find out about this fish stream and sue me. Sorry, go on. I may have to rescind this date offer. My wife was listening now. Hey, <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I hope we don't say anything too dumb. All right. Or do. Um, all right. So so that that's your hotel that's where you are and again this is super clear the cute the more i look at these pictures oh, i think i just found your bedroom um that sounded weird didn't it the way that just came out all right just a little bit 
this is the closest thing I think to the penthouse. So that's when, when, when we think of Sven just in his waders, that's where we should be thinking of him. All right, beautiful. All right, um, let's move to the evening. So, so Maria's going to score Ben, uh, sorry, Sven as your plus one. Is that right? Yes, my wife agreed to that backwards comparison you made. Excellent. All right. Let me move you guys around. Um, all right, you, you can see the park where, where we are, correct? You on I'm that? sorry, I missed it. Are you on that page? What, what page is showing for you guys at the moment? Uh, looks like a campfire in the middle. All right, beautiful. So this, this is the park, right? This is McClure Park. <clears throat> so so teachers over here on the top left you're all kind of getting here roughly a, you know around the same time right dusk is coming down you can see tom starting to stand the fire he's talking to this guy over here you recognize mark who doesn't have his bike with him now and then maria and sven you know some people are coming in right and it, you know everyone's saying hello to tom and again an air of normalcy is starting to come back right and there's uh these lights are still working like i mentioned power is still on in the town right so tom has this fire going at the moment <clears throat> excuse me but there's there's ample light to kind of like talk and see each other and so on and everyone to interact so as you all start coming in tom's you know tom seems to just be fucking thrilled that he survived as long as he had right so he's really kind of like you know waving at everyone and got a big smile on his face and he just seems to be thrilled that he's you know more than that he's just made it to another birthday right he's made it he survived the pandemic and he's come out on the other side so you can see again he's building this campfire in the center ah, i didn't mean to move that he's building this campfire in the center and there's you know you can smell cooking fish where he's already laid some stuff at the outside what what are you guys gonna do? Um, um, this I'm, I'm, unless she shuts me up, I'm probably just being friendly and pointing everything out on the walk up here. And as we get up, I'm probably pointing out old Tom here. Um, I I would have brought a gift of some sort, um, because I'm assuming he's everybody knows him. So I probably would have had like an eight out of ten kind of gift, like. It was the best I could find, but it wasn't good enough. But it was the best I could find. And it's something special for him. So what what you'd found is a fridge magnet with Tom, like the name written on it. And you'd got a, a, a magic marker or a Sharpie and you'd written old in front of it because that's what everyone has started calling him, old Tom, right? So it, when you hand it to him, he, 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 really, like, he really starts laughing. He's, he calls you a, you know cheeky young pup right and he's like at some point you should be lucky you'll get as old as me and you should be lucky and hope somebody gives you a fucking fridge magnet like the one i just got so he's really thrilled with your eight out of ten gift yes so <clears throat> tom says like as 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 you guys are, and i'm gonna put you over i'm assuming that you're talking to him and maria i'm assuming that you've gone with him <clears throat> mark comes over and he says, hey, Tom, I got something for you, as I promised. And he, he comes over and he's got uh, like a, 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 a baking tray, right? And it's got a cover on it. As he gets over, he pulls it off and it's a rabbit that somebody caught. And Mark had bartered with him or negotiated with him and gotten him to trade the rabbit. So he makes a big deal of saying to Tom, hey, so here you go, some protein that isn't fish. Someone caught one out of town. I saw the person on the way back while I had a bounty of chocolate. I thought of you, Tom. Here's some fresh rabbit for you. So Tom's super excited, right? Like, like puts the rabbit on the, uh, you know, the outside of the fire and starts cooking that up and makes a big deal of saying to Mark, hey, that's the first time I've had rabbit in months. Thank you. So that little interchange is going on. And Sven and Maria, you guys are kind of in the background hearing that going, or, you know, a party to this kind of touching exchange between... Tom and Mark, who seems to have done something genuinely nice for him. All right, I'm second guessing that stick in his spoke. <laughs> you still have the stick. It's not necessarily going to be, um, you know, going to be a bad thing to keep prepared to take that little fucker out. But anyway, excuse my language. All right, so, all right, beautiful. Um, Teach and Lance, what, what are you guys up to? I was wondering if uh, I could have found maybe... Uh case of beer or something to bring something i had hidden stashed away for a special occasion or could i maybe uh 
sacrifice a ration of fish for it. You know, yeah, the the take two rations of fish off your um your your character sheet, but yeah, you were able to to scrounge up whatever you want to give Tom, right? Like uh. You know, Mark was able to, in the background, Mark the scavenger was able to help you secure it, right? So whatever you're looking for, like, a, you know, a fifth of scotch or a six pack of beer. Oh, yeah, fucking inside dice. That's exactly right. Thank you for that, Sven. I forgot. Keep your two fish. Take off an inside dice, if you wouldn't mind. That's exactly what they're there for. It's one of the uses laid out in the handbook. So, Grumpster, thank you. So what is it that you've given him, by the way? Uh, something enough to go around. So that's why I figured a case of beer would be pretty two for everybody. Yeah, you know that's that is pretty epic, right? So you come in, you've got you've got a. I don't know if you're carrying it on your shoulder. You're, I'm guessing you're not wearing a suit still, but I don't know if you're bringing it in. No. If you're on a bike or if you're carrying it in, but as you come in, you you've got that crate of beer, twenty four beers in that that little pallet that's on your shoulder. Yeah. Red wagon. <clears throat> Classic red wagon. Is the, I, I'm going to sound like a dumb foreigner now, but is that, a, is that a brand of beer? No, that's what I'm bringing the beer in on. <laughs> oh, man, I thought for a second you were having a stroke and you were just throwing out random words. So I, I, I'm glad it was just my ignorance. All right, you're coming in with a little red wagon with the, the crate of beer. Tom sees you. He knows everyone that kind of comes here. And again, you you live locally, right? We can figure out where on the map you live, but you're kind of like local to this place. So he sees you coming in with this, and he's really thrilled. And he looks at it and says, "What you got there?" Oh, a little bit of the old uh, something, something. Oh, for me, he claps his hands together. He says, "Tell him it's for me. Tell me it's for my birthday." It's for everyone. Oh, you're just too good for this earth. Like, people like you, you shouldn't have survived. That came out wrong. Tom was trying to give you a compliment there. But that didn't sound like the compliment I intended it to be. All right, well, so as Tom's stepping on his own tongue, Teach, what are you up to? I'll um, come down. I've got a... I will have had a house full of books being a teacher. And... Um, I will have wrapped up a book in newspaper uh, for old Tom and I will um, have brought down some of the fish as well um, to, to share. And I'll give him the book. He'll, uh, he can unwrap it and it's the uh, subtle art of not giving a... <coughs> I... I, I lovely um so tom takes it from you and he kind of looks at it and says teach you always surprise me with your depth and with the generosity i i this isn't a book i would ever have picked for myself but i feel like you're giving me a message and i'm very grateful he's trying to be nice about it trying to say something out that's not working so what, what what are you doing matt or what what are you saying to him in response to that because he, he's trying to say thank you but at the same time it feels like the subtle art of not giving a fuck he, he looks at you and he says not sure what message you're sending me with this but i really appreciate this especially as i've run out of anything good to read um i so say when you when you're done with that one just give it back and um, i'll trade it out for another one if you run out of books He's very grateful. He kind of holds it up and winks at you and says, thanks, Teach. I, I really appreciate it. This is very sweet of you. So he's very uh, grateful, again, that you, you've done this for him. Hey, Matt, I may have just crashed the API. I'm not sure. Uh, yep. I did, didn't I? What did you I blame Jose Floyd. I actually, I actually don't know what I did. Like, I was trying to create two characters, but I don't know what I... Because I can see them in the, the list. There we go. Okay. I think it was when it generated the weapon for it. I'll have a look. Ominous oh, root root. Oh, 
All right. So, Maria, what and Sven, what like like uh, th- so the evening unfolds, right? A couple more people turn up, like the evening kind of, you know, people are being friendly, like everyone's talking to each other. Someone turns up, and they've got um, <clears throat> it's one of it's one of Tom's neighbors, but this older lady turns up. And she's actually brought him um, a, a plastic cake, right? So it's kind of like a joke for everyone. She's like, yeah, I didn't have the stuff to make you a real one, but I was able to find this. So she's found like a plastic toy cake or something and it has a real candle in the top. So it's like, you know, everyone's kind of laughing and joking about that and, and kind of like source of amusement. And the evening just feels normal, right? People are cooking food. A couple of people uh, sing Tom Happy Birthday. That leads into a couple more people just starting to sing hymns and starting to feel, again, like you know the 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 beers are hitting people right most people have had anything to drink for a while so that's coming in yeah thank you very much Finn. um so that that that's as you say like the the shoe is about to drop right so everything's normal <clears throat> and everyone seems to be having a really good time and it's getting a little bit later and then uh two people appear right and they they appear and they kind of call out as they're approaching So they're not threatening on the surface of things. But as they start walking up, they've got their hands up in the air. So that, again, they they don't appear to be threatening. But none of you recognize them. And it causes kind of a ripple of anxiety to go across the uh, or or to go through the the group. Right. The people are like like a little bit concerned that like there's new people in town. Right. And like no one's really used to seeing familiar faces. What, what, What do you guys say? They're walking towards you with their hands up. They're smiling. And they're, they're kind of, hey, how are you all doing this evening? The hands up how? Like they're showing that they don't have anything on them at the moment? It, it, more in greeting than anything, right? Not not hands up like, hey, we don't have any weapons on us. But they're walking, they've got their hands up like kind of like saying hello or waving hello to you more than, uh, more than showing their hands. I'm going to step in front of Tom. Hide behind a tree, sort of, just to, just to watch. See what happens. Teach steps in front of Tom, protective. I'm probably just chilling here and watching since uh, somebody else is down here. Probably greeting them. So as they they so are you guys being? I, I'm 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 trying to understand. Like teachers getting in between them, like being a little bit on the protective side, which makes sense. Are you guys being like welcoming? Are you guys being unfriendly? Like what what is the general vibe as they start to approach? I'm gonna take everyone else's cue, just kind of be neutral until something happens. So it's time to kill them with your thumbs, right? Um, I mean, I might take a step forward. I'm not gonna be unfriendly. But uh, I'm probably just going to be in that slight bit of shock, like you mentioned. Hey, feller. It's a guy and a gal, by the way. So as they start to approach, <clears throat> again, they're, they're, you know, on the surface, they seem to be friendly, right? And, and the guy says, hey, I'm Jace. And the girl says, I, I'm Dolce. Or Dulce. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Dulce. So uh, as they start coming up and, and Jace says, I couldn't help but smell, right? We were just kind of walking up along the coastline and we saw this fire and we started heading towards you. But man, like that rabbit really smells good or whatever's cooking on the fire, whatever he can smell in the air, right? He's like either the fish or the rabbit. He's like, you know, we, we don't have anything, right? We haven't been able to catch anything for a couple of days. Like we're starving. We were going to see if we could find a fishing rod and just, you know, we, we've come from inland and we're just getting to the coast now. <clears throat> we were going to start fishing, but would you guys be able to spare any food for us? So when she says her name, I'm going to crack a joke about being like the coffee. But uh, beyond that, have we had new people show up since? Not have really. Started getting more normal? No, you know, the, the, you guys are kind of on the edge or on a corner, right? So people walking up the coast could get to you. But no, you haven't really seen anyone, right? It's, it's people have been hunkered down for the most part. So seeing new people still feels, again, a little bit unusual. So this is a, a first is for you process yeah yeah um i'll probably say yeah i I think we still got some uh because we've been gone for a while like yeah i think there's still some food on the fire which there is if you want to give it so they both seem like i mean they look at each other and they you know almost comically they don't quite run 
hands together and lick their lips, but it's close, right, in the way they look at each other. And Dulcie says, hey, that, that would be great. We really are starving. We've really had nothing. Like, even if it's just a bite or two, we, we'd, be, uh, we'd be really grateful. Yeah, I'll go over and grab two plates or bowls or whatever we have. That's a helping source. And are, are these like tables that are sitting yeah, here? Yeah, they are picnic tables. Yeah, I'll set I'll set them right down on the table since he's walked gravitated towards it. And then I'll take a step back. All right. So <clears throat> while this is going on, I might just walk the uh, perimeter of the park, make sure there's uh, no one else out there lurking about, whatever. Hey, so do you do you have um, tactics, or do you? Uh, uh, no, I don't. Okay, so make a perception check, and and again, I know that's that's Matt's favorite. All right, so you don't see anything, right? Everything seems to be pretty normal, right? It, it's more and more people have turned up, right, to celebrate Tom's uh, birthday. <clears throat> but nothing really seems to be out of the ordinary or, or what you'd expect, right? It all looks like it's been for the last couple of nights, right? Or, you know, for the last week or two. Nothing seems to set off your spidey sense. All right. So it looks like these two are alone. It's what you. It's yeah. what you'd assume, yeah, or what you'd surmise. I'm probably just doing the friendly thing and asking the basic questions. What are the basic questions? Oh, where are you, where are you coming in from? Uh, I mean, you ran out how long ago? Did you run out of food? Or so they I you here. Let's have you guys. Um, let's have you make a gut instinct check on on what you take away from these guys, right? So. Everyone make a perception, psychology, streetwise, or acumen check. Does the gut check not work? No, gut instinct. No, it's been redone since then. Okay, because I tried clicking it. It gave me that little admin warning. Oh, CS street. I see gut check. Does that still work? Streetwise is under uh, Colonel. It's not programmed to do it the same way as you do it now, Tony. Okay, so. okay. I was just curious. So, uh, do you want one check or two? One check. They they count as one unit. They didn't offer skills yet either, so you might want to upper one. Wait, was that to me, Zero? Say that again. Yeah, I said Mina hasn't filled in her skills yet, I don't oh. think. Uh, so. Yeah. Roll. So, so maybe maybe just give her a skill mod of, of one for it or something. Yeah, like just like an arbitrary, yeah, like like take, take a plus one. So 2d6 plus one. I teach. How do I do that again? Um, was it in your In your character sheet? There's the skills tab. You can click that and also click the skill specifically. Okay. I'll teach. Nice. <clears throat> so, Teach, you're the only one that doesn't really feel like you get a good read on these, right? So, the the rest of you, the, there's the, there's something about these two that just it, it 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 doesn't immediately sit right with you, right? And you can't quite put your finger on it. it. Might be the way that their eyes, you know, they keep looking backwards and forwards at each other. It might be that they just turned up, but something 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 doesn't these. It doesn't feel good about these people. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel like they're serial killers, but it doesn't... It, something just strikes you as odd about the way they've turned up. All three of you. All right, so I guess I'm asking, um, what brought you here? Are you just passing through, or are you looking for some place to settle? Yeah, no, we, we were... You know, we've just been wandering, right? We've been... Uh, 
we're from Oregon originally and just Oregon's a shithole at the moment, right? Like there's no food, there's no nothing, right? And it's, it's you know, neither of us are that good about like catching rabbits and chasing after livestock. So we were, we were hoping to find somewhere on the coast where we might just be able to fish. And, you know, we haven't really seen many people. This has been pretty desolate for the last like two or three days. They claim they've been walking for like a week or two now, right? Kind of heading up and just taking it slowly and sleeping where they can. <clears throat> but they haven't seen many people, right? So Jace looks at you and says, like, I'm kind of open at the moment. Like, if we found a group of people that we could throw our lot in with, yeah, that'd make sense to us. Canadians are pretty nice. Uh, British Columbia? Huh. Yeah, they're a good group of people. Let me just do something here very quick. So, so two go. questions. Yeah. Um, have we looked around to see if there's any other groups or have we been, I know you said we've been pretty hush hush inside, but has anybody gone out and looked at other areas? Do you mean, well, that, that might depend what you mean, right? So, <clears throat> you know, Mark has been out on his bike a bunch of times, right? And he's, start, you know, he's kind of going out in circles, right? Like, you know, trying to, Try, trying to find everything, right? And there may be other people that are living in the town, but like no one's done anything on, on an organized basis, right? And, you know, for a lot of people, even though power's on, it, it feels like, you know, having to catch your own food and prepare food, it just feels like, the, like no, no one's really organized in that way yet. So no, you, the, whatever they're telling you, it's up to you whether or not you believe them because you don't have any firsthand experience yourself about what's out there. No, okay. Um, hmm. uh, well, I have to make a comment about seeing how other people feel about it since you just turned up because there's, there's, there's a lot more than just us sitting right here to figure out how we want to, how we want to make this work. I'm basically trying not to let on that you're the first visitors we've seen. <laughs> sure. Hey, Lance or Maria, teach. What 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 are you guys like? T Tom's kind of hanging back a little bit, right? Not not that it really matters, but neither like, Tom nor Mark are coming forward. Like Tom keeps sending the fire. Mark's like wandering into a conversation with people. You said I had that bad feeling about him, a little bit of a bad feeling. So I just made that comment about, yeah, you know, you know, just sort of a, you know, a bit of a passive aggressive comment about like, yeah, just keep on moving up north or something. You know, if they came from the south. Yeah. So he 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 heard that, right? So he heard that, and I had I made a GM role for how he reacted to that, right? So he's kind of looking you a little bit sideways. So you've made it. He's smart enough to recognize that that was kind of a barbed comment. Yeah, just you know, letting them know where I stand for now. Teach, what are you up to? Reacting to the, has he reacting to the barbed comment? You know, just I think he's waiting to see what the rest of you do. Like, he obviously he's feeling it from Lance, right? Like, and you can see it in this guy's face, right? He's. I don't want to say resolute, but he's not, you know, he's he's smart enough to know what Lance meant by that, but he's also, you know, waiting to see what the rest of you say. Well, I'd say it'd be, um, it, it's actually very late, and I, I'd hate to leave someone out outside in the cold, I'm sure, at least for tonight, regardless of what anybody else says, or you staying here, I'm sure we could provide you a room to get a, a solid night's sleep. So he, he looks genuinely grateful, right? And he, he looks at you, Sven, and then he looks back at Lance and then back to, to Sven. And he's like, hey, man, like, you know, a little bit of food in our belly. Uh, the last couple of nights we, we've slept in, in, you know, shitty houses that have no heating and nothing was working in them. If you've got somewhere that would feel like it's kind of warm and dry and we've got some food in our belly, we'd be really grateful. So I, I personally wouldn't know where the best place would be because I'm assuming that we still have some sort of authority um, in town or someone who's taken up authority. Uh, so I'm not really going to try to say where to go unless 
one. I, I'm trying to think that maybe they might stay in a hotel, but we'd have some sense of authority that's like on watch. No, there's there's no authority. There's no one like you know. There's there's no one that's taken any kind of leadership role in town as yet, right? And f- quite frankly, you're staying in a hotel, right? So not suggesting you take those rooms, but as soon as I was you, thinking about it, yeah, room four B is clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a spare room. I, I swear, bed in your room. I think. I mean, this could, you, you could get kind of like you could make friends really quickly with this. All right, so they as soon as you mention the hotel, like I mean, again, his eyes light up and he's like, "Hey, man, like we'll sleep in a janitor's closet as long as it's warm and dry with this food in our belly." Like, where are you staying? Like, where can we stay? Oh, you can. Yeah, if that's the case, you know, you can. When we get done here, you know, uh, you can probably just follow. If there's a group of us that are going to be walking back. You could walk back with you and I can get you set up, I'm sure. So it, 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 him and Dolce are like super grateful, right? They're both like really genuinely grateful, right? And so uh, yeah, they, they're kind of like hanging around you, Sven. They're, they're you know, they, they, they seem a little bit rough around the edges, but they seem genuine in the way they're talking to you, right? And they seem really grateful and very appreciative of the fact that, the, you know, this township seems willing to, to take them in at least overnight. So they, they seem to be in good humor and the rest of the evening kind of like, you know, moves on and starts to wind down. So teach Maria, like any, any interactions from you with these guys before the, the evening winds down? I don't blame you. But, but I, I do like Sven, so I'm kind of making sure that, you know, I watch too. I'm just going to stay next to old Tom and um, cook up the rabbit with him in the fifth. So, BD on the new guy. Yeah, so um, as you're like, so like, you know, 40 minutes or whatever goes by as you're cooking up, like Dolce comes over to you and she's, you know, she's trying to be friendly. She gives you a smile and she's like, Hey, I, you know, that, that was beautiful. Is there any chance I can get like another bite? I I'm still starving. I haven't eaten for a couple of days. Like that was awesome what you gave me, but one more bite, like, could you think you could spare it? Sure. So she, 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 say that again. We've got extra party, yeah. <clears throat> you got enough. Yeah. Like people have brought food. You've got enough to be able to spare her a couple of more bites and you could even be really generous and put a couple of bites on there for her boyfriend. All right, beautiful. All right, so the evening starts to wind down, right? I mean, they're, they're really grateful. Like, as, as you know, she takes the food back, gives it to Jace. He, he kind of gives you a big thumbs up and like a big grin, right? He's like really, really grateful. So evening starts to wind down, right? And, and you know, people um, start to like head back home. Like there's like, you know, half the number of people there were 40 minutes ago. Like everyone starts to starts to drift away. So Jace looks at, over at swear, Sven and says, hey, w- whenever you're ready, we're ready. We've been walking for days. Like, we're ready for an early night. Like anytime you're ready to call it quits, we're ready to go with you. Okay, yeah. Um, I think what I'll also do is when I get some time alone away from them while they're distracted, I'll probably chit-chat with Lance about maybe uh, trying to take shifts and keep an eye on the, the room that they're staying in. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading what he's drawn. So walk me through, like, fill in the gaps around that. Like, what are so, you planning on doing for keeping watch? How's that going to work? Say, if there's a uh, another house or a building that's close to that hotel, I guess you guys are going to the hotel, right? Maybe across the street. I'll uh, I'll just stay there. Spend the night, you know, watching out the window. Yeah, and I guess maybe what I'll do is I'll... I won't go up to my room. I'll probably... Uh, go like a few floors down, but stay on the same floor. So, are you saying that you're staying like you're, you're going to try and keep your eye on them as well? Was that right for you, Sven? Yeah, between the two of us, like I, I'll probably stay up for a little bit just to listen in, and then if he's got eyes on the outside, then that should, in my eyes, given our situation, seems like it works. Do either of you plan on sleeping this evening? Like, are you going to like just stay up and watch what's going on there? Um, I'll probably stay up for a few hours, at least after 
after I bid them goodnight and just listen, do some quiet things to see if they start rustling around or try to leave the room. Let's have you. I Sorry, go on. I, I might stay up the whole night and just sleep during the day, you know, because, uh, you know, what else is there to do? And, so, you know, these are unusual circumstances for the town. I would agree. Um, let's have you both make um, a, a perception check with a minus two C mod. Can I re-roll that one? You you can do anything you choose. Yeah, like it's an inside dice. You can absolutely do it. If you just click on it, you'll probably remember. Yeah, I'm not even bother. I'm gonna just six hundred percent. All right, and you're you're not re-rolling, Sven, no? No, it's not gonna be with the dice. Okay. So, hey, I'm not sure if you're on um, on Twitch. Are, are, are you are you looking at the screen on Twitch by any chance, Zero? Uh, I am now. Okay. So, where where around? Like roughly, where are you? Like the bow line, I think you can see this showing up on the screen, right? But like roughly, where are you in this area? Where are you going to be sleeping? So that's the hotel that that. Bow, yeah, bow line. line. Yep. Okay, I was hoping. Um, you see that patch of grass off to the right of that? Is that like a house right there near that corner? Yeah, one of these would be, right? So this is this is yeah. a park, right? So I think the the uh you'd be able to, you know, th one of this house is empty, right? So this previously had a beautiful overlook of the uh, the sea. Still does, right? But there used to be residents. So you could break into that house and and spend the night there. All right. Yeah, that looks cozy enough. Okay. So you have a uh, a, a commenter too, by the way. Where? In your stream. Oh, I do. That never happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I yeah, okay. Um, all right. So, Lance, as 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 morning comes up, right? You 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 realize the one of the doors that you thought was closed, like around here, one of the doors to the bow line. That you thought was closed, like as the sun comes up, you realize that it, it, it actually looks like it's open, right? So you start to have a moment of, you start to question whether or not that's been open all night or whether someone came and went and you just didn't notice. Maybe you were peeing, maybe you dozed off a little bit, but you're not really sure whether or not that, that you know, this is super early in the morning, like 5.45 or not. As the sun starts to rise, that's when you start to realize, hey, was that door open all night or not? Hmm. Is it quiet? Looks like it. Still early in the morning, right? And there, there doesn't seem to be anybody, uh, anybody around now. I'm, I'm gonna walk right up to it, like I, like I own the place, and just check it out. Okay. Like with, like with authority, just walk there with authority. Okay. So <clears throat> as you, as you pull the door open, like. It, it, you realize like this isn't the way that this was left last night right the, the this door had been closed but like now it's open right so as you're standing looking at it you hear a blood curdling scream right and somewhere just behind you and you're not sure but it's coming from over here so you can hear you can hear a woman screaming and that's where we're going to pause for the evening Ooh. Ooh. we couldn't trust Vin. <laughs> oh mate don't trust anyone these days never trust any other people all right so th that's it for the evening so I, I i appreciate all of you leaning in i very much appreciate you building out those characters for me um mina i i if if you need any help building your character and there's also some paradigms you should just pick one of those if like any of those stereotypes i can send you a link to those but if any of the stereotypes work for those just change your name and pick one of those but um, I, I, again, this was just an introductory session just to kind of get us grounded again. I look forward to picking this up again in two weeks with you and really starting to push this out a little bit. All right, nice. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, and I'll get, I'll get mine fleshed out. I'll have a zero help me out with that. <laughs> hey, if you need any help for anything, just give me a shout on Discord, okay? I will. Thank you. 
Beautiful. As always, guys, this was really fun. I appreciate you. I enjoy playing with you. Matt, I hope you get some um, some sleep, and I'll speak to you all next week for some dark. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.